Let's, let's begin with the question that I think is on the minds of a lot of people in the UT community, both uh, people inside and people who are watching with interest from outside, and that is, is Bill Power is going to be fired as president of the University of Texas? Yeah, you know, the Berka blog that came out was, was really, you know, quite fascinating to me in the sense that, uh, you know, it made a statement that I have been given a directive to fire Bill Powers. And, you know, a directive based on an expression of a viewpoint in Tower Talk about seven or ten days ago. You know, the answer to that, uh, Berka blog, is no. Um, no, no, that you were not directed. Although the blog post, Mr. Chancellor, the blog post actually said you were asked to uh, to not, recommend I, the firing of I Bill have Powers. Not, I have not been asked to fire Bill Powers. So the, the the difference between the wording that you put out in your statement that I was not directed to fire Bill Powers, and what was written in Paul's blog that you were asked by the chairman to recommend the firing of Bill Powers. There's no yeah. daylight but between those there, two. There's no daylight between those two. Yeah. And, and let me also just express to you as to you know how I evaluate presidents. Uh, I don't evaluate presidents based on an expression of a viewpoint, uh, specifically a tower talk. Uh, I evaluate presidents based on qualitative and quantitative measures. And you know, one of the things that uh, I've been able to implement over the past year and a half is really establishing a framework for advancing excellence that has been an inclusive process embraced by presidents and the Board of Regents. And you know, one of the things that I look at every day when I wake up is you know, in regards to performance, yep. is is a president, whether it be Bill Powers or 14 other presidents of the University of Texas system, advancing excellence across their own university based on the framework, based on their individual work plans, which have been approved by both the chancellor and the board. Right. And also a qualitative assessment is, are you advancing the goals of the University of Texas system? And so that's how I base, you know, performance, and that's how I base you know, my evaluations of presidents. So, but based on that measure, how does President Powers fare? You know, President Powers, uh, you know, over the past year, I've been very pleased uh, with his initiative of, of responding to a very important goal of the framework, which is implementing a, a statement, uh, both in verbal and written, that he's going to improve the graduation rates of our students at our flagship right. from 53% to 70% in five years. I'm very pleased that um, he has also put together a task force on improving operational efficiencies at the University of Texas system, space utilization, you know, how we, you know, utilizing our administrative structure of the university. Those are all, you know, very good things that I'm very pleased about. Uh, so, you know, he gets strong grades on that. He has, you know, your, he has say, your support in those areas. He has your support. Yeah, absolutely. I'd have to say... You know, like my mother says in conduct, you know, maybe a little, a little remediation there. But uh, what do you, know, you mean by that? Well, you know, I, I think that uh, you know sometimes uh, you know Bill's views about advancing the University of Texas he gets very passionate, which you know I get very passionate about. Right. And uh, you know, sometimes uh, I'd express things in a different viewpoint, but that's just a personal opinion. Yeah, and that that is not a deal killer as far as you're concerned for the assessment of his presidency that you have to undertake. Correct. Yeah. So uh, the, the word insubordinate has been thrown around a few times in the last year. Uh, the, the outside perception of the president's conduct as viewed by the regents. You know, has he been perceived as insubordinate in some of the comments he's made? Do you find President Powers to have been or to be presently insubordinate to his superiors at the system? He has not been insubordinate. Um, I, I will tell you, um, let's go back to the, to the Tower Talk. Yeah. This, this is, again, the blog post that he made right. following the decision by the regents not to allow an increase right. in tuition for the University of Texas right. at all. So, so, so I'd like to go back to, to in fact, you know, his letter to, to UT Austin's constituency base. Right. Um, yeah, I was, I was disappointed, not with the expression of President Powers' views. I was disappointed with one sentence there. And the sentence there is that the actions of the Board of Regents will inevitably impact the ability to teach and create new knowledge at UT Austin. And let me explain why I'm you know, disappointed. Now, disappointment doesn't translate to anger or termination. Disappointment is based on you know, what do I know, you know as chancellor to be able to determine whether you know, that statement you know, is a true statement in my opinion you know, based on how I view things. Mm -hmm. Now, everybody sees things in different 
with different lenses. Right. But I'd like to explain uh, to you and you know, to all our supporters about you know, the lens that I'm looking at this. In the past three years, Evan, the Board of Regents have allocated over half a billion dollars to the University of Texas at Austin. And, and let me explain to you there. So, so two years ago, when you know, all of us went through a very difficult legislative session, you know, the average reductions in general revenue for our universities you know, approached 20%. You know, for UT Austin specifically, that was going to be about a 16.5 percent cut in their overall general revenue appropriations for the legislature. The board very quickly, you know, enhanced the AUF distribution rate by adding enough, by adding 75.8 million dollars to that, which, as a result of the distributions to UT Austin, decreased the impact of a GR cut for 2012 from. 16.5 down to 8.1 percent. Right. Now the previous board under Chairman Huffine's leadership uh, also allocated 25 million dollars a year for three years which included 2012 and when you added that 25 million dollars the impact of the GR cuts was basically zeroed out. So, so the impact for UT Austin in regards to actual dollars available mm -hmm. for the mission you know were no less in 2012 you know when you, when you take a look at you know, the, the impact of dollars under the general revenue pie because it was supplemented yeah. by AUF. And we're so fortunate to have, you know, the West Texas lands that, that allowed the board to do it in a time-limited perspective. You know, the other aspect is, um, you know, the board, you know, with discussions between me and President Powers and myself, you know, realized that our dream of getting a tuition revenue bond you know, for the new engineering building at UT Austin, which is so important, uh, it, because of all the priorities that the legislature faced, was not able to fund that TRB or any other TRB across the system. Well, the board added $75 million on top of a previous allocation of $30 million for a total of $105 million to match philanthropy to make that become a reality. Yep. In addition, um, I'm convinced that to transform a university, and my vision, and the board's vision, our constituents' visions, is not to be satisfied with UT Austin to be a top ten public university. Our vision is for UT Austin to be the number one public university in America. And so the reason why I was so excited about our previous Board of Regents meeting is that the board allocated an increase in the AUF distribution rate from 45 to 48 percent which really literally mobilized $290 million over the next 10 years, linked to $350 million that would be raised through the local regional support of Austin leaders for a total of $640 million, which will be truly transformative in the ability of how we teach students mm -hmm. and groundbreaking research. So, it was that one particular sentence. So you disagree with the president when the president said that somehow on, the action of the regions undermined the ability of the university on, to be. On actually. that sentence, yeah. I emphatically do. Emphatically disagree. Yeah. Have you conveyed that to the president? It has been conveyed through the Office of Academic Affairs. So You have not had a conversation personally with President Powers? I haven't had a conversation with President Have Powers. you had a conversation with him at all in the last week since all this broke, this tumult of the last few days broke? No. You have not? Know, president Powers hasn't called me. Uh, but but I certainly you know, you, the, and the you've not called him. The president's report yeah. daily, right? You know, to to the executive vice chancellor for academic affairs and health affairs. Right. So Dr. Reyes, who is you know the ad interim, you know, has spoken to Bill. Word, word got back to him. Expressed you know kind of kind of our disappointment in that one sentence. Right. But also expressed the fact that you know the chancellor, you know, is not recommending. Yeah. A termination based on your expression of your views in the Tower Talk. Are, are you and the chairman of the board, Mr. Powell? Uh, aligned as far as the, the the view of the president that you just articulated is the chairman upset with the president on the basis of that sentence is he more upset uh, with the president than simply on the basis of that sentence how can you characterize you know that? I would I wouldn't call it upset you know I would call it um, you know again you know j just a disappointment not on the expression of views you know of a president in regards to the tower talk last right. week I, you know I think the board and I include myself, yeah. is that we were really feeling good mm -hmm. 
in regards to the actions of the Board of Regents a week and a half ago. So, uh, you characterized the, the, the chairman as disappointed. Again, you said disappointed in that one statement uh, by the president. Did the chairman go farther and in any way with you address the question of President Power's job security? No. So the, the issue of President Power's job security never came up because in the, the context of the blog post or the aftermath of the blog post. The, the chairman realizes that the Board of Regents hires presidents. Right. And the Regents' rules, and we'll be happy to share them with you, Evan, yeah. are very specific. Yeah. That for termination of a president, that the process of that is actually the Executive Vice Chancellor of Academic Affairs or Health Affairs provides a recommendation to the Chancellor in the context of the entire performance right. of a President. And if the Chancellor agrees, um, then you know, recommends you know, termination. But that recommendation needs to be affirmed by the Board of Regents. Right. So the recommendation to, you know, to well, you know, the process of hiring a President is the Board of Regents' actions. The process of terminating a president, whether it be you know, for, you know, any of the 15 presidents, yeah. would eventually have to come through my office. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, for the chancellor, you know, it is you know, the chairman who recommends you know, either the hiring or the firing of a chancellor you know, before the Board of Regents. Yeah. Um, but you know, none of us, you know, we all serve at the pleasure of, but I think you know, part of the University of Texas system yeah. is that nothing is done in isolation. Mm -hmm. Um, everything is done through a holistic review, mm -hmm. and I, I believe it's the reason why we've been able to recruit, you know, great presidents. So what you're saying, Chancellor, is that in order for some action to be taken on the president, it would have to go through your office. Absolutely. Right. And nothing has gone through your office. And nothing. nothing. And are you saying that nothing will go through your office? Again, you know, the, the way presidents are evaluated, yeah. we're evaluated all, right. you know, on a daily basis. I hope, you know, that, that in my case, uh, I feel I'm doing a great job. Yeah. I feel I'm advancing the University of Texas system. Mm -hmm. I wake up every morning that day, you know, every day trying to advance UT. Right. I know that our 15 presidents right now are waking up every day. And, and again, we, you know, we evaluate presidents on a daily basis. I know, though, that if I plateau or I'm not advancing you know, the university uh, system as a whole, that you know, the board has a prerogative any day. On any given day, you could be at risk. On any month. Right. You know, to say, you know, Francisco, we're not satisfied with your performance. Same for the presidents, in the way that the president's process happens. Correct. So if I were Bill Powers and I were sitting across from you and I said, Chancellor, do I have any reason to, to worry about my job security? Your response would be what? Again, you know, the Burka blog was, you know, uh, do I have to be worried that I'm going to be terminated over expressing my views regarding my tower talk? The answer right. is no. So Paul's blog was wrong. Correct. So the, the, when Paul reported that there was some question as to the status of President Power's job, that was factually inaccurate. Absolutely. If that's the and, case, and, and yeah. the other aspect yeah. is that I refused. Where did that come from? Well, well, but if the Chancellor, with, with respect, if that's the case, then when you put out your statement last week saying I was not directed to fire Bill Powers, why didn't you simply say Paul's blog is factually incorrect? At no time did President Power's job security come into question. Why not spike the entire thing? I actually thought I did. I guess I could have been clear. Well, what was what was left, uh, Chancellor, based on what Paul wrote, was a concern that people outside read your statement and parsed it compared to what Paul wrote and thought. I wonder if they're deliberately answering a, a version of the question, but we're somehow trying to put distance between I, I think, the two. I think people are overreading the statement.